They lay half naked on their wooden boards until women covered them in sprigs of greenery. Flowers were thrown down from the windows as they passed. A ragged little lad ran along with them sobbing. The corpse at the front, with a grey beard and a bullet hole in the forehead, had belonged to his father. The boy had stayed with the body in the hours since the fighting and still refused to be separated from it. With every step, the cortege grew in number. It's wonderful to be shortlisted for the Bailey Gifford Prize. Um, first, because if you look at the shortlist, it's such an, a stunning group of writers, and I'm just very proud to be one of their number. And secondly, um, it's the fact that this prize is about writing. And um, I take writing very seriously, and you know, um, I, I'm very happy to have been noticed in connection with a prize like this, which is about the quality of writing. I chose to write about this moment in Europe's history, partly because it is so European, and the Europeans of, the, of that moment, it seems to me, are more European than Europeans today. I mean, they have a completely joined up awareness of what they're doing. And the pulsing, mysterious heart of that century is the revolutions of 1848-49. And it seemed to me the more and more I looked at them, I mean, when I was at school, I remember being told that they were complicated and a failure. And I remember thinking, what an unattractive combination that is. Who wants to work on a complicated failure? But on, you know, reflecting on them uh, in, in the last 10 or 20 years, I've realized that actually, although they certainly were complicated, they most certainly were not a failure. And they're deeply interesting. Everything human, Every, uh, the entire sort of apparatus of modern politics is in there. And a lot of things are coming to light for the first time that are now part of our present.